frame hits suck. But let's see if we can figure out how to stop it from happening. Yep, frame hits do happen. They happen to everybody. And in fact, I'm gonna tilt you down real close and show you a couple of frames that I've dinged a couple of times. Let me tell you, it's heartbreaking. It happens to all of us, but it is avoidable. So, let me show you some tips. And then the rain starts. Awesome. First frame hits I've ever had was on this Evo. I put a nice ding there, a nice ding there, and a nice ding there. Mind you, it happened on this one because I was doing something stupid. Sorry guys, we got this guy here. This is the Prime 4 Catapults um, Casper. And you can see right here, I took a good chunk right out of that resin. I was shooting this in the middle of the cold, cold testing bands. And I, uh, my hands were getting too cold, couldn't feel the ball properly. My release got sloppy and bam, destroyed it before I even got to review it. All right guys, before we get started today, I uh, just wanted to show you this frame. This is what we're gonna be shooting today and doing the demonstrations with. This is the Island Made Catapults Pocket Thumper. This is an absolute piece of art. I love this frame. It's one of my top favorite frames ever. Pocketable, beautiful, sexy, and made by an awesome dude. So um, this is what we're going to be doing. And just in case anybody's wondering, we've got some 100% uh, uh, 0.7 on here today with a Warrior Mongo pouch. And uh, it, I believe this one's tapered 20 to 12. And uh, for me, in my opinion, the number one thing that causes frame hits is your, uh, your release. All right, here's a good look at my form uh, on this freeze frame. When you uh, look back from the forks, forks are evenly stacked on top of each other. Bands go all the way back. And then the pouch is even. Not My fingers aren't pulling down or pushing up on the pouch. The pouch is even and tucked into my anchor point. Now let's have a look at what you shouldn't be doing. This is how it should look. When you pull back, that pouch should be even with the forks. So when you release the ball, it's going to fly forward, go right through your forks straight. Your pouch will end up inverting like this and spitting the ball out nice and straight but if for example i'm not going to do this with a ball in the pouch because i don't want to actually ding my frame but if you pull back and your elbow isn't nice and high so where your pouch is even okay if you have your elbow low or your wrist cocked or something like this up or down either way now if you pull it down you see how the top band is stretching more than the bottom band well that's going to end up pulling that thing up or down and sending this sending this um, projectile into one of your frames or your hand. Vice versa, the same thing with the other way. Now you see the bottom band is pulling longer than the, th the top band because it's not even. And because this ball speed bumped, you have no idea where that ball is going to go. It's either going to crash into your frame this way or whatever, or, or even your hand possibly. Now, one last thing that could be causing you issues is actually plucking your release. And what I mean by that is aggressively releasing it. Really what you wanna do is once you get it into position and your pouch is sitting nice and even, nice and straight, so when you're on your stretch, basically what you wanna do is just keep your fingers open so you've got room to move your finger, this top finger and this finger to release. And even that, what I just did there was a bit too much, uh, too drastic. Really what you want to do is keep your hand open, got your pinch going, you're comfortable, just slightly slip it open. Take a look, I'm going to take a shot here. I'll try to get as close as possible for you. I'll probably miss, but it doesn't really matter. That's not the point of this. Here we are, have a look. See that? I just, whoop, just enough to get it going. Let's try it one more time so you can take a look. Just like that, just enough to get it to slip out. You'll be golden doing that, not, not an issue. So, let's take a couple more shots and uh, we'll talk about the second thing that could be causing you issues. All right. Number two. Now one of the other things that could be causing you issues is actually when you stretch, stretch out your bands and do your draw, you want your forks to be stacked on top of each other, nice and parallel. 
As soon as you do this or this, you cause an issue. Now, look at the gap that you have here. Now, if I do that, you see that gap gets smaller or this, the gap gets smaller. Well, once, once you're leaning forward and your gap, if you're leaning forward and your gap gets smaller, that actually reduces any forgiveness you have with a, basti, with a nasty release. So really what you want to do is make sure you can get those bands set up and drawn with, those, with these forks stacked directly on top of each other as close as possible. So basically what you're doing is you're making a 90 degree angle from your, from your fork to your shoulder or wherever it is it's going to line up. You want that to be nice and even, even as possible. All right, so on this first shot here, my form looks to be pretty decent. But I've slowed down this second shot a little bit just so you could see the whole thing in action. So basically, I'm going to follow my regular steps, take my draw. Arms come up. I'm going to stretch out this frame, but you'll see the bottom fork is a little bit ahead of the top fork. Now, just before I release this shot, you'll see me make a slight adjustment with the front fork to make it a little bit more even before I release right here. And then I release the shot. Now just to keep in mind guys, the camera is your friend. So is the mirror. Get in front of there, hold it up and see how your positioning is. Now even if you're holding your, your forks like this and they're directly on top of each other and you want to rotate them and you want to shoot like that to give you a better picture, that's no problem. But as soon as you start doing this or this, no good. Problems. This is no good. That is no good. Nice and straight. Doesn't matter which way it is, but they got to be even. Got it? Try an email steal through this thing. Now your follow through is probably the third most important, I believe. Now when I say follow through guys, I'm not talking about, some people think this is a follow through when you pull and then you flick at the end. This is a no-no, that's gonna cause you problems. If you can flick straight and keep your, keep your uh, forks stacked on top of each other, fine. But as soon, I find that whenever I used to flick it, I would turn it down like this, and that's closing the gap and putting my, putting my frame and my hand in jeopardy. I highly do recommend pulling your shot back, holding it there, releasing the shot, and then holding it in position that whole time. I'm gonna give you a good look at that. Hold on one sec. If we're lining up on target we want to keep that fork tip on there we're going to release the ball it's going to travel through the forks and we want to keep that point on that target that whole time until the ball has hit it we don't want to do this none of this none of this or pulling back or moving forward for some reason some people do that but you basically want to keep that fork on target the whole time until you shoot and actually hit the target all right i'm going to take a couple of shots at the target hopefully you can see uh what i'm talking about here I'm going to give you a couple of angles so it's nice and clear but here's basically what I want you to do I want you to stretch out your bands stretch out your shot get locked on your target release and hold it the whole time pointing directly at your target let's give you another shot of it here <laughs> this one's a little close to the camera. I'm uh, a little bit nervous. <laughs> Here we go. Stretch it out. And hold it there. Right on your target. Hold your position the best you can until the ball is released, gone through your forks, and then hit your target. That's your best bet.
let's just do a quick recap. To ensure you have a good, even grip on the pouch, so you're not speed bumping up and down, when you pull that thing back to your anchor point, to make sure that you're gonna have a good release. When you release, you don't want to pluck it, you just want to let the band slip from your fingers. Here we can see some pretty decent form. Forks are stacked on top of each other, bands are equally stretched, and the pouch is nice and straight and even in, at my anchor point. Just keep in mind guys, follow through is key. Your shot isn't finished once you release the pouch. The shot is finished after you've hit the target. I try to keep my arm in position for at least one second after I've hit the target. Use these three steps and I'm confident you'll never have a fork hit again. All right guys, it's cold and raining all over my camera. I gotta wrap this one up. Hope this video helps somebody else out. Um, I know uh, it took me a while to figure out why I was causing all these kind of issues and I'm uh, hope hopefully I explained it good enough and makes a lot of sense for you guys to uh, wrap up any issues that you may be having uh, with your with your slingshots. Anyway guys, I gotta go in. I'm freezing and I'm cold and I'm wet. So you guys take care, get out of practice, stay safe, be good to each other. I'll see you again soon. I love you guys. You're freaking awesome. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. There is nothing worse than putting big dents and chips inside of a brand new frame that you've saved good hard work and money for. And finally you get out and something stupid happens and you got to put, put a big scar in it that stays there for life. Now the three things that I mentioned uh, today were, were the three that I believe were the most common. Uh, that said though, if I had to add a fourth one, I would have probably said fatigue is the biggest one after that. Uh, I've had a few where my hands started getting a little bit tired and on my draw it slipped out of my hand and I framed it. Um, but besides all that, these three that I mentioned were the most important. And I really do believe that as long as you're not getting tired or doing anything stupid or making really bad bands, uh, you should be good to go. Taking things slow, concentrating on your shots and putting these three tips together. You'll probably never have to worry about a frame hit again. All right. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I'll see you again soon. I want to attach a couple of playlists for you to check out. I hope you'll enjoy them. And, uh, that's it for me. I'm done. Take it easy.